Hello everyone, I'm My1001 and today I'll be showing you my Minecraft Beta 1.7.3 world. This is the seed. And this is what it looked like when I created it four years ago. I started this world in 2019 at some point and uh, I've been playing it on and off for that entire time. I chose this world because there was lots of water and sand at spawn because I had a specific thing in mind when I wanted to build this world. And here's what my world looks like four years later. So welcome to my beta world. As you see, I've built quite a bit. We've got a lot to see, so let's get into it. Can't shift click on armor, I forgot about that. So this is my stuff. You know, so I've got diamond tools. And that's because I've got a lot of diamonds in this world. So, first things first, when I started this world, I immediately travelled across this bay here and started building this base. And all these other things that you can see, I sort of added later. So this is the world spawn point. Uh, in my example, when I loaded up a fresh copy of this world, I spawned over there. Uh, the location of your spawn changes, I found, when, with seeds. It's kind of random. It's always on a sand block, and so I spawned right here. Uh, this is the spawn point, so I always respawn here if my bed's broken. Pressure plate was for testing purposes. Made this little uh, pad uh, just to sort of mark the world spawn point. This is the zero zero pagoda. This is the center of the Minecraft world because in here is zero zero, is the four zero zero. So emanating out from these four blocks is the quadrants of the world. These nether portals connect to a nether hub, but we're not going to go there. Whoop, and I fell in the water. Connecting the base to spawn is this path. This path is pretty much for aesthetic reasons, but also I just like walking around here. It's quite nice. One of the rules I have with my Minecraft world is that I want to maybe eventually update, and if I do want to do that to later versions, I'm not going past these hills over here because I have checked with admits a sea finding program that a stronghold will generate over there the other stronghold locations I have already generated and strongholds do not retroactively generate in a Minecraft world so therefore if I've already loaded those chunks in beta 1.7 it won't appear in 1.0 and later so I can't go in that area so I can't travel that way Coming up to the base here, you're going to notice there's a lot of dirt, and that's because I have a passive mob farm, an old style passive mob farm, and I had to remove all the grass. This is why I wanted an area with lots of water and sand so I could build my passive mob farm. Also, the area is lit up, that's for my hostile mob farm, and also just to make the base safer. And first thing you may notice here this tower, <laughs> it is ugly. But it was more of a building experiment. I just kind of wanted to build something. And on hindsight, this does not look good. But it was just it was just something to do. I might tear it down. There's nothing inside. It's just like several floors. There's nothing on the floors. just all lit up. But yeah, I, I would like to build a proper castle at some point. Because I've never really built a proper po uh, castle in Minecraft. Out here is my red to, uh, redstone testing yard. I've got... Lots of little uh, gizmos I've tested for concepts. This was me testing T flip flops. Uh, here is a quick pulsar. And this is, I don't even know what this is. I, I, I haven't really played around with these in ages. This is some kind of quick pulse as well. Simple memory cell, or is this a T flip flop? I don't know. Anyways, next thing is we've got this. Let's hop in the boat, press the button, fall down, and we arrive at the string farm. Whoop, let's right click. So this is the string farm. This was a spider dungeon. I converted into a uh, string farm. Let's just quickly turn it on. I have lava lights up above, which cut off. Spiders spawn. They are funneled by water. And they swim up here where they drown in this tank. This is a 100% lossless farm, 
meaning that there is no loss of any of the string drops. There are other designs by other beta Minecraft YouTubers out there that use cactus, uh, which is a very good, efficient way of doing it. However, there is a chance that some of the cactus will be, so, sorry, some of the string, I should say, will be destroyed by the cactus. So that's why I prefer this design. Just got a behind the scenes door access. This cave, this is one of the many mushroom caves because mushrooms have infinite spread in uh, Minecraft, in beta Minecraft, just to say. This is the lava light source. So underneath these blocks of glass, when this retracts, uh, light leaks through the uh, glass and prevents spawning. So we'll turn it back off. And as you can see, the spiders are drowning and I'm getting string, which is very good. I don't use this as often, but if I need string, uh, I use it because my other mob system is not very good when it comes to producing string. Hop back in the boat, press the button, and then the boat can rise, because boats rise in water in beta. Uh, this is a boat elevator, in case you didn't notice, and uh, I kind of came up with it by myself. I sort of figured out things. It's a bit janky, but it works. Head over here. We've got this nice little retaining wall, so I had to cut into the hill here. Uh, there's not a lot of block options in beta, so you have to work with what you got. This is the output of the slime farm. It's ugly, I know, and it kind of blocks the view of the main building, of the main storage room, but it works. I've got like a control panel here. I can open the bottom, I can put out lava. Uh, in case you don't know, uh, there's a sp slime spawning pad down below and it uses a spiraling water stream to push them up here. They come out here and I can process them. I can burn the big slimes with this. I can output water, which will push out the slime balls or the small slimes out here so I can punch them because there's no real way of automatically killing them without completely ripping this out and redoing it. And this, uh, Putting this on will uh, turn on the slime spawning, but we won't do that yet. So this is the main storage room and the main sort of hub of my world. This is where most of my building has been. This is where most of my resources are kept. And I've tried to make it look nice. This entranceway is actually one of the last things I did. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's like a weird little gazebo thing. It was just a flat wall for the longest time. I might change it. But you come through the glass sliding doors. And this is the foyer. This room is pretty much 99% uh, decorative. Got a carpet uh, with a creeper face. Got these little, uh, I don't know what you call this, atriums with these trees, the glowing trees. Flowers. Looks pretty. Um, and then you've got the main centerpiece here. So I have a four-way mob evader mob farm design, uh, very similar to Ethos Lab's design in uh, Chocolate Island. In fact, you'll probably notice a lot of this space is inspired by Chocolate Island. Uh, the mobs spawn down below and they swim up through this 2x2 two -two water tube here and they get processed on the upper floor. Their drops come down this water tube and collect here on these pressure plates. And yeah, so I have like a despawn timer which doesn't work. I I need to work on it more. Uh, there's also a passive mob farm. That was the sandstone thing you saw on top. Uh, their drops come down here and also land down here. And yeah, these lights are just for show. So the uh, drops land here. I can come along and pick them up. There's no hoppers, of course, in beta. So I have to manually pick up everything. And so by having it in a central location makes it easier and much more convenient. These redstone lights here tell me the status of the mob farm so currently they're off that means both my passive and hostile mob farms are turned off got lots of lighting in here because beta minecraft is very dark and so as we're coming into night i try to make this building look as bright as i can so i can see what's going on and also i just think it looks cool uh we can go out the let we can go out here and i can show what i mean so over there is the Zero Zero Pagoda, and that's the road, and because of all the lights I put on it, they glow at night, and it, and it you know, stands out, um, and, it's, and it looks visually striking. 
that uh, creeper statue over there was actually quite a recent addition to my world. I decided to just have something decorative over there. And uh, I had lots of mossy cobblestone, so I thought, why not put it to use? These are simple farms. This is just a simple wheat farm with fences underneath, so I can't trample the cropland. And there's some sugar cane. Nothing incredibly fancy. This is just simple farms. A lot of the doors in my base are these 2x3 piston doors. And underneath here is access to the redstone wiring for everything. This is the despawn timer I mentioned, which doesn't really work. I need to work on it more. There's a mob evader. And all these redstone lines control various things of the uh, of the aspects of the base because all the all the farms in the base I should say are controlled from a single control room which we'll get to in a moment so yeah we went through the left door that goes out to the farms let's go through this door and this leads into the storage room we've got this first storage corridor here this is my uh, color wheel I keep all my colored wool in here I've got more of the other types white is the most common all this brown wool is pretty much being collected from naturally spawning sheep because cocoa beans are not farmable and they're rare so I just focus on trying to get uh, sheep wild spawning sheep all this pink wool came from uh, wild sheep I should add and I've also got some dyes in here as well it's just if I need a lot of colored wool for something I can just get it I don't know why that's in there uh, over here, leather storage. All these came from cows who uh, died in the passive mob farm. Eggs, which come from the egg farm here, which I'll explain in a second. And this is my bulk storage of white wool, because that's the most common colour I get. So this is the egg farm. When the passive mob farm spawns passive mobs, I have the option to sort out chickens, which will come down here, fall to that hole in the ceiling, and they'll collect here. And every five minutes a chicken lays an egg and so the eggs collect through that hole and sink down because items sink in water I should add they don't float like they do in modern Minecraft and they come out here and I can pick up eggs so if I need lots of eggs for some reason which I will in the future uh, I can store them I've got plenty of storage and here's the main storage room this thing I'm actually quite impressed with myself like this took quite a bit of time sort of to plan it out. I had this all master planned in my head and uh, yeah, I quite like it. So we've got these storage bays, these things in the middle, each containing multiple chests of different things. I have these dispensers which also contain things and then there's some storage bays at the back. Lots of windows, lots of lights to make it bright. Uh, bright during the day, you can see the, you know, the bright blue daylight sky. And uh, we'll quickly go over what's stored in here. So starting on the left here, on this we have wheat, sugarcane, more sugarcane. Uh, you're probably going to notice I'm a hoarder. Like, for example, these seeds. Who needs all these seeds? Well, I've just kept them. Uh, that's the cactus farm, which we'll get to in a second. Cactus. I have six double chests of cactus. Why? I don't know. I, there's no use for it, but I've got it. Uh, I've got some cactus dye and some spare cactus in here. Over here is sandstone, more sandstone, flint, if I need a lot of flint for some reason, some empty buckets, lava and more empty buckets. These are all my saddles and music discs I found in dungeons, though this chest is getting very full. I might need a, another chest somewhere else. Netherrack assorted crap and if we come across to the other side of the stairs this is my tree storage area there's a tree farm up there these are all my saplings I've got lots of oak saplings this is wood birch uh, spruce and oak there's only three tree types in beta so not a lot of options and also there's no plank types all planks come out of the same as these oak planks so and then I've got bone meal, axes for chopping down trees. And then over here, this is my soil, or dirt I should say. Gravel, got lots of gravel. These are currently empty. Four chests of cobble, I think I've been using that for something. And then over here, 
glass and smooth stone, smooth stone and stone slabs. Uh, various plants. This is not all my plant stuff. I think these are all the pumpkins I do have. And just assorted various random blocks that can't really be sorted. Pretty much all my ink sacks. That's a lot of the mossy I have currently banked. And then these two chests are the most valuable chests. This is the redstone chest. I'm kind of low on redstone dust right now in here. I do have some more redstone dust elsewhere. All my rails, minecarts, pistons, everything I got pre-crafted. And then there's this box. Now, mind you, this is a vanilla survival world. I have never cheated once. Everything you're about to see is legitimate. This is my wealth chest. So this is all my iron. All mined. There are no iron farms in beta, no iron golems, so iron has to be mined. This is all my gold. There's no gold farms. Zombie pigmen do exist, but they only drop cooked pork chops. No gold nuggets, no villager trading, nothing. All my lapis. Uh, lapis doesn't really have a use except for building and dyeing things blue. My diamonds, which I'm actually starting to run low on, so I probably need to do a strip mine session soon. Glowstone, which is hard to get because there's no fortune or silk touch. Mind you, there's no enchantment, so these are like one diamond per ore. So I've mined a lot of diamond ore, a bit of obsidian. I think these are the first two music discs I found of this type. All my cocoa beans and my very first wooden pickaxe, which I've kept. And you see, it got a bit of use. Um, so yeah, I, I like showing off this chest because it is a, it, it, let's be honest, it's a brag chest. So these are dispensers over here on this wall, uh, backup tools. So I've got pickaxes, that's supposed to be swords. Oh, uh, I'm going to stock these. Bows, fishing poles if I need a fishing rod. Helmets, pants, chest plates, shoes, shears and flint and steel. So I can just hit a button and it'll give me what I need. In the middle here is the control room. We've got two more redstone lights that also give me the status of my mob farms. Come in here. This was actually, so I should probably explain how the base was built. As I said, I had it all master planned out in my uh, head. The first thing I built was the foyer. I sort of planned that out. Then I built this and the storage room was designed to go around it. So this is where everything is controlled from here. Um, this was, yeah, probably the first complete room in the base. Um, got the master switches for the hostile mob farm, the passive mob farm, and these switches along here control things, so this can toggle spider spawning in the mob farm down below. Egg production at the egg farm, which I showed earlier. The pork cookhouse, which is just up there, we'll show in a second. Mob launcher, which I might show later on. Sheep shearing station, which is on the roof and the cactus farm. Currently the cactus farm is off and I'll actually go and show what the cactus farm looks like. It's outside here, come out these doors, got a little decorative area there and this is the cactus farm. It's pretty much your standard uh, design where I have signs that shear off cactus when the cactus grow automatically pops off, collects in the water, drops down here, flows to this water stream and goes there in the storage room. But because I have no space for cactus I've had it off for a while where this piston extends, cuts off the water, this piston retracts, and there's a sign there, and that means the cactus items just fall into lava and burn up by default. And yeah, there's no point having that on right now because, as I said, I've got six double chests of cactus. What am I going to need that for? And also, I should add the wheat in here is decorative, and all these levers uh, don't do anything yet. Um, they may in the future if there's uh, uh, extra functionality I want to add to the base. So we'll see. And I've got two more spare ones at the back here. So plenty of options. Should probably go to the other storage cove here. So this is where all the hostile mobs uh, dro uh, drops are kept. So the passive mobs are on that hallway over there. This is hostile mobs. This is string. I overcompensated for string. I <laughs> This is four years worth of string accumulation here. I've barely crafted any of my string into wool. I've only ever used wool from the passive mob farm. So yeah, I'm not having a good time farming string. Arrows, plenty of arrows. I routinely empty these. 
gunpowder. This is my current gunpowder supply. I use this so much. TNT is so useful in this game since we don't have enchantments and beacons. Uh, feathers. Zombies, by the way, if you do not know, drop feathers because rotten flesh did not exist yet. And these are bones. So this is my bone supply. I use bones quite a bit as well for bone melon crops and trees. Uh, just assorted stuff. And this is my slime ball collection. Uh, I just sort of use this as a def uh, default dump chest. Got quite a bit of coal in here. Should probably look into that. Um, over here is my furnaces. I smelt everything over here. More coal in here. And yeah, try to aim to keep these full at all times. I have so much coal. Mind you, wither cells and farms do not exist, so all that coal was mined by hand. Up here is the uh, pork cookhouse, as I mentioned. Pigs are separated up above, and they fall through here, fall through the lava blocks that are on fire, and they run around and burn to death and die. And they drop pork chops. And I have 12 double chests of pork chops. Why? I don't know. I just did. I just do, because, you know, I can. Same over here. Also, all these chests are full. And this is another way down. Lava light down there. And, yeah, back out to the storage room. Out here, if I can quickly show. This door leads outside. This leads to nowhere. This leads to my original wheat farm. I had, like, four blocks here. This is the only one surviving. And if we continue through here, this leads back to the foyer. So let's head back into the storage room and we'll go up those stairs because that's those stairs lead to the tree farm. Come up here. And this is the tree farm. So I have a large room with two rows of dirt which you plant your saplings. Preferably oak saplings because birch and spruce are a bit iffy when it comes to growing. You can grow uh, rows of oak like this. I'll get some bone meal and I'll show. Most of the time they won't naturally grow so you will have to force it with bone meal. Uh, in modern Minecraft they grow beautifully in rows so they're quite easy to to do. Uh, so yeah, I just bone meal. Of course it only takes one bone meal to grow something but if it fails it will consume the bone meal. So that's why you need quite a bit of bone meal. But of course I've got my hostile mob farm that gives me plenty. So yeah, there you go, you've got a row of trees and then you just come in here, harvest your wood and most of the saplings will fall as the leaves despawn will fall into these water streams. And I'll just give an example. They flow down there. Got these little viewing windows. I just tried to make this look nice as I could. There goes the logs. And the items fall down and collect here, which is uh, where some crafting benches are located. There we go. And pick up the items and I can put them in storage. So that's the tree farm. Let's put our bone mill back. You might have noticed there's some sticky pistons attached to these stairs. Whatever for? Because this stairway acts as a door and it leads to the back here. So for the longest time, this was just an empty uh, barren dirt patch. I think there was like a creeper hole here too. And so I decided to give it a renovation. Since I can't have grass at my base, I tried to make this look like a lush like forest with you know grassless forests so it's all dirt got plenty of bushes hidden lighting hidden lighting everywhere I try to have glowstone under leaves have these waffle lights which I quite like added these supports because the the tree farm for the longest time was floating I think it looks quite nice got sugarcane by the water uh, there's little patches of decorative wheat flowers there's even mushrooms uh, I did have to dial back the mushrooms because the mushrooms were getting very crazy out here. And I have a redstone access to the door. This is a T flip flop door. That's why actually I used to have a bit of trouble with this. That's why I experimented with T flip flops a lot out out in the yard, out in the the practice yard. I don't know. I think it looks nice. Oh, I should probably add this is a naturally generated lake and it was separated, and so I added like a little 
a little waterfall here. Might do something with this area. I'm thinking about other things like on that hill there, putting something on that little island in the middle there. We'll see. We'll see eventually. Because, you know, a Minecraft worlds, they're always work in progress. You're never really done. All right. Continuing on with the tour. We'll head down there later in the tour because it's not it's not an important location. Well, sorry, it is an important location, but you get what I mean. <laughs> so I come to the side corridor here, have a viewing window into some redstone, look out here to one of these little garden things, come out here, this leads back out to the front, this connects back in. I try to make this look nice, so I've got these light posts, which I think look decent. Once again, not a huge block power in beta, so don't have a lot of options. Tried to make grassless gardens using the AstroTurf uh, green wool uh, grass. Got a little pond here, over here, got little bushes and some flowers. There's no flower plots, so I have to put them down on dirt or grass blocks. It looks alright, and you probably saw earlier there was another one over there. We'll head back in here. So over here, nether portal, it's toggleable. I can turn it off doing this. And I can turn it back on with a flint and steel if I had one. There was supposed to be a flint and steel in there. Later on, this will automatically relight the portal. It does uh, The flint and steel functionality doesn't exist until 1.5, I believe. This is access to the mob farm, which we'll check out in a little bit. And then up here, go up these stairs, is my bedroom. So this is my bedroom. As you can see, it's quite large. Got these uh, glowing trees with the flowers in here. Got my beds. Got my dogs, which are probably going to be have to move because I recently discovered uh, tamed wolves add to the passive mob cap, meaning they're slowing down my farm. I have piston lining all around, and yeah, I quite like this room. Got uh, lots of views of the surrounding landscape, which is all brown. You can see parts of the base. That's the passive mob farm, by the way. And also, I've got a backup kit here. So if I need to get somewhere quick, I've got a full set of tools, arrows, food, uh, armor, water bucket, everything you need to get back on your feet. So you remember how I mentioned earlier in the video that I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to Minecraft? Well, uh, call uh, the reality TV channel people because you're about to see how bad of a hoarder I am. Coming over here, down these stairs, this is the mass storage unit. And this thing is filled with items. So I've got signs marking, so these chests are filled with feathers. Also filled with feathers, this is all filled with arrows, bones, so yeah, those chests up in the main storage room, when they fill up, I move everything down here. Cobblestone, I don't, actually I think the cobblestone, no, this cobblestone is full now. Um, feathers, more feathers, I just add a new bay whenever I need. Dirt, oh, not quite full on dirt yet, but one day, that's empty. Redstone dust. Yeah, I've, look how much redstone dust I have down here. More arrows. And then this is the current one. I haven't put all the chests in yet. But yeah, this is infinitely expandable. I can just mine out this wall and continue. And uh, yeah. Why, why do I have this all down here? I don't know. I just like keeping it. So now I'm going to go over the mob farms and this is perhaps the most technical part of the video because this whole base was designed around these two mob farms. So I have the passive mob farm and the hostile mob farm. The passive mob farm of course spawns all the animals, so pigs, sheep, cows and chickens. It does not spawn wolves, if it was in the correct biome it would spawn wolves and I do have a wolf farm which we'll check out later. And then there's a hostile mob farm spawns zombies, skeletons, creepers, and spiders. It would spawn slimes if it was in a slime chunk, but I have a separate slime farm for that reason. And we're going to go check out the hostile mob farm first. So when I first started this world, I came over here and I dug down a 2x2 tube. 
and began digging out the room for the hostile mob farm. I recommend doing that if you want to build one of these, because you get lots of cobblestone, coal, iron, dirt, gravel, lots of blocks to work with. So this is the mob farm. This is basically a modified version of Etho's four-way mob evader design mob farm. We can actually take a step in there. I have a door here. Uh, actually, I should probably demonstrate. When these levers are down, I cannot open this sliding door. But when these levers are up, I can come in. And so this is the room. It is quite big. I believe I calculated there's at least 1500 spawning spaces in here. That was a while ago. I, I could be wrong. I have these four main 6x6 six six spawning uh, pads in the middle with an extra layer of this three wide uh, spawning pad around the outside. All these water canals are configured to pu uh, push all the mobs to the center. So I should probably say they spawn on these and they walk off into these two block deep channels and they get pushed into the middle like so. And then they get right into the center here. And this is your yeah, Ethos four way mob evader and it's designed that no matter which way they come in, they will end up in the middle here and will begin swimming upwards. And that leads up to the roof of the storage room where the mob processing floor is. I'll just get up here. Oh, these are double slabs, is it? Interesting. Um, in the middle of all these spawn pads, in the middle of these 3x3 three three areas, we have a slab. And that's because I, that's to prevent uh, spider spawning, though, if you check underneath them, there are sticky pistons that can pull them back and turn on spiders. You may notice above each of these slabs is also a glass block and there's lava up there, and that's the lighting system. So currently the mob farm is off because it's filled with light, but when I want to turn it on, pistons will extend outwards and will cut off the lava, cutting off the light, making this room dark and allowing uh, hostile mobs to spawn. So we'll just get out here, head back out, remember to lock the doors because if I turn this on while there's mobs in there, they will come out and they will attack. Uh, I should probably add this viewing room, of course, it's slabbed over so no mobs can spawn in here. And these lights uh, at the back, uh, these torches, are far back enough so that way uh, it's calculated that at light, light level zero at the glass. Because uh, technically mobs don't don't spawn, sorry, spawn at light level 7 or lower, but it has been found that they're less likely to spawn at light level 7. If you have it 0, they're going to spawn faster, if that makes sense. I, I probably bungled that explanation. But the main control levers are upstairs, but I do have overrides down here. So that is the lighting system, so as you saw. I'll flick that again. The lighting turned on and off, and you can already see some mobs in there. Turn that back off. And yeah, there's quite a number of mobs. Even though I'm down here, meaning that half the, the mob farm pretty much isn't working, you can see there's quite a number of mobs. When I'm further away upstairs, which is 24 blocks above, this thing goes crazy. And as you can already see, they're already falling into the water, and they're already beginning to swim up to the upper floor. So we'll turn that off, so you can actually see in there, and we'll do this one, which retracts the slabs. So, there you go, you see, slabs are up, so meaning spiders cannot spawn, and slabs are down, meaning spiders can spawn. I should probably explain what this means. So, a spiders, uh, so normal mobs require a 1x1x2 one by one by block airspace to spawn. So zombies, skeletons and creepers require that space. Spiders however require a 3x3 three by, three, uh, by 1, well technically 2 but it can be 1 air with a 1 translucent block on top. So if you wanted to make this a spider only system you could put a layer of glass or slabs above, one block above and only spiders would spawn in here. And yeah, so they need a 3x3 three three area. If there's, if there's any block inside that 3x3 three three that could stop them from spawning, in this case a slab, they can't spawn and will only spawn the other mobs. Uh, I have this option 
because one, it's cool, it's fun, it gives lots of functionality to the build, and also just because uh, I found the string farm is better for getting string, uh, spiders can be hard to handle, and it's a bit hard to create a universal grinder for all the mobs, but we have access here, this is the redstone for the lighting system, this took a lot of work. There's a lot of sticky pistons. I can't remember off the top of my head how many sticky pistons and how much redstone's in here. But there's quite a bit. So yeah, we, you can see here the lava flows out. The glass block is underneath there. The sticky piston is there. We'll push a block, cutting off the light when mob, fire, uh, mob, for, mob spawning, I should say, is turned on. And yeah, in reverse. The redstone signal comes down here. There's like a torch torch thing down and uh, this is the override line I put this in recently I need to improve this though uh, the purpose of the override line is if something breaks down here and I need to fix it rapidly I don't have to go all the way back upstairs turn it off and then come back and come back down I can just do it down here this accesses to the uh, spider spawning options room this uh, is a bit of a mess. I probably could improve this, but I mean, it works, so it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Uh, this room is huge, as you can see, and uh, this, yeah, this took quite a bit, especially since I'm mining underneath the mob system. There's multiple times I would break and water would leak down and whatnot, and also. As you can see with these rooms, I have completely unnecessarily made every surface cobblestone not needed. You can have exposed stone and, and, and dirt and whatever. This is purely aesthetic choice. But yeah, this all controls all the slabs. Uh, the pistons that control the slabs. Same system with the redstone. This is the override line. Once again, have to improve it. Oh, I should probably add, this is the center of the mob farm. I am thinking about adding a squid separator, because there has been a few times where squids have spawned down here, and they've kind of clogged the, the mob elevator, so I might have to look into that. So yeah, and then down here, there's also two other things. Mushroom farm. So this, uh, I've recently been converted to the church of the mushroom soup, thanks to Monster, and... Yeah, this is my very first mushroom farm. So, if you don't understand mushroom, uh, if you don't know, sorry, I should say mushrooms grow infinitely in beta 1.7. And what I've done is I've got a row of mushrooms here and a row of mushrooms up there. Oh, that one's missing. Oh, okay. Don't know what happened there. I must have accidentally broke it. And yeah, so they spread diagonally down through this block down here. And also, I eventually had these grow down here, and I decided to keep them, because this also provides another row of seed mushrooms. And I must... Yeah. Um, yeah, so they spread out across this pad. This one's grown out fully at this point. We might actually give this one a harvest. I have more brown mushrooms than I have red, and I've been farming the reds more to give an equal balance level, because, of course, you need both types of mushroom soup. And yeah, so it's it's just very simple a uh, control. We'll just we'll harvest the red side. Redstone retracts the pistons, causes water to flow out, and the mushrooms collect over here. Pretty simple. I have built a slightly more advanced version of this out of the caves uh, outpost, which we'll see later. And at the other end of this room, we have this little uh, corridor which come around here takes us to the slime farm we drop down and this is the slime farm quite a different contrast to the cobblestone room upset uh, so this is the slime spawning pad it's currently flooded to turn it off if you recall there's a lever up there that will um, turn this on uh, when so the water will be removed and uh, slimes can spawn. So slimes in uh, beta spawn at, in slime chunks at y equals 16 and below. In later versions of Minecraft this was changed to y equals 40 and also they could spawn in uh, swamp biomes. Swamp biomes. And so 
But yeah, so slimes are a lot, a lot rarer to encounter. I had to use an app to find this slime chunk, uh, a third-party app, and I built this. Slimes cannot swim when they get in water, so what happens, they spawn on the wool here, when there's no water, of course, and they fall into the water stream and get pushed up to the back there. And just and you can see how low we are. It's y equals 8, and you can see bits of bedrock here, so that's how low at the bottom of the world this is. This is just an access door. This is just a viewing room, which also doubles as a sugarcane farm. I don't know why, I just wanted to decorate it, and I was like, you know what, I'll put a sugarcane farm down here so I can harvest sugarcane. And I've got some flowers at the end there to make it look pretty. I mean, this is completely superficial. <laughs> None of this really needs to be here, but you know what? Might as well make it fun. The redstone controls are up here because I made them down lower and slimes are spawning in the redstone, so I had to move it up here to where they won't spawn. It's pretty much like the lava lighting system. We have a water block here which flows down and cuts off the spawning. Um, if I remove... Oh, hello. There's a slimy over there. Huh, I might have to look into that. But yeah, um, when I turn the farm on, we can just use this as an example. It cuts off the water, which then uh, removes the water and allows them to spawn. I will note one of the challenges of designing this farm was to get enough lighting to make sure that other hostile mobs could not spawn in here while trying to save on glowstone because I didn't want to use lots of glowstone so yeah this this was very precise lighting and uh, yeah, it took quite a bit of uh, work but I think it came out good and this is the slime elevator Do you want, let's go for a ride so the slimes get pushed to this corner I'm not touching my keyboard right now I'm only touching my mouse and yeah they slowly get pushed up these stairs uh, if I hit W I can move slightly for, uh, faster, but yeah, and then we start getting sent up this spiral. Once again, this is completely unnecessary, uh, that's access to a cave which contains even more slimes. Uh-oh, okay, I'm going to have to look into that. I've been slabbing over the caves that spawn slimes, and uh, apparently I haven't done a very good job. I might need to, I might need to fix that, because I've kind of want perfect spawning conditions but yeah I've decorated this all with sandstone and lights completely unnecessary I just did it for fun um, I also had a lot of sandstone so I might as well use on something I still have lots of sandstone but yeah as you see we're slowly spiraling up one block at a time and we should be getting on the home straight soon here we go and here's the home straight and we're coming up out the front here at the slime farm and there is the kill chamber and there's actually someone in there hold on oh I think that might be a squid actually squids also spawn in here the poor poor buggers um, we'll put that back Yeah, it's a squid. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't actually have a squid farm in this world. All the ink sacks I've got are just from manually killing squids the old-fashioned way. So that's the slime farm. Just a quick clip from Future Mine here. I just realized I never showed uh, why I have such good mob spawning rates. If we check out with this x-ray machine here, I've pretty much lit up all the caves around my base. I've done a lot of cave lighting. I've still got a few little dark spaces which I haven't dealt with. So no mobs are spawning in them, interestingly. But yeah, as you can see, I have pretty much every single cave lit up. And you can see some of the dungeons I found. But yeah, uh, this is important because you want your mobs, your hostile mobs, to spawn inside your mob farm. And to do that, you have to remove all the external places. Uh, you want to slab over any slime chunks you see. Uh, for example, I've slabbed these two rooms. This was my original starter slime farm, I should probably add, but until I made the one closer to the base. 
but yeah, you just want to make sure everything is lit up or slabbed over so no mobs can spawn. Okay, so to show you the second floor in action, let's turn on both our mob farms and let's go. So if we press F3, uh, mobs have entity tags, as I've already demonstrated in this video, in beta 1.7.3. This was removed in beta 1.8. And I already have some sheep and cows upstairs, which I have to get rid of in the shearing station. So what happens is, uh, yeah, the hostile mobs, of course, they'll start coming up soon. The passive mobs, however, have a different sorting system. Ooh. So I'll just take these guys out, there we go, I'm guessing the shearing station is online right now if they're in here, so here come the hostile mobs, here's our first victim, and he burns there, he didn't drop anything, yeah, here you go, so that's what I mean by the item collection. Items will start collecting here. If we head up here, this is the uh, passive mob sorting. Aha! Yeah, we can see there's some chickens. So what happens is the passive mobs swim off, get pushed into the middle here, and chickens, because I'm gonna turn that down, chickens, because they uh, flutter down and they don't straight fall, they land in this water stream here. And the water stream takes them along here, and I have a toggle. So currently right now it's set on that they get pushed to the left here and burn up in this lava block. Actually, are we going to have a chicken? Here we go. Is the chicken demonstrating? Dead. And then if, if, if not, this will turn off and it will send the chickens to the right here, which sends them along this pipe which then drops them into the egg farm, which we saw earlier in the video. And then over here, the pigs, cows and sheep just fall straight through, and they land in this water here. Uh, we don't have any as an example, unfortunately. So yeah, they get pushed diagonally through here. Cows and sheep are 1.5 blocks tall, or about 1.5 blocks tall. And pigs are less than a block tall, so they can fit through. So the pigs and sheep go through here, and the pig, uh, sorry, the cows and sheep go through here, and the pigs go through this one high back gap. So the cows and sheep get, go through here. Normally, this is turned the other way, and they get sent into here, and they drown in this drowning tank, and all their items then get sent down uh, and through water channels to the foyer, to the AFK spot of the foyer. But right now, I've got the shearing station on, which means they get sent to here, where they drop down, and I can shear the sheep for their wool. I love the sound of that thing, by the way. Um, it's, it's so fast. It's so fast. I don't think I've ever had a mob farm this fast in my life, like in the years I played Minecraft. I mean, I don't really try to build the fast in mob farms, but... It's just like unbelievably fast for how simple it is. So yeah, we've got some passive mobs spawning up there. And there we go, we've got a sheep. I see the sheep coming. Um, of course, when sheep uh, die, they only drop one block. However, if you shear them, you get multiple blocks. But however, there's also an extra bug. Hold on, let me get some shears. Alright, got myself some shears. This is how the shearing station works. So, kill the cows because they have no usage. And then what I do, kill the sheep. Uh, diamond sword kills them in one hit. And then, whoop, supposed to shear their corpse, but I somehow pressed a button there. There you go. And you can get up to five wool from this, I believe. Which is very handy for the brown sheep. I also turned off the shearing station, so right now um, any sheep and cows will be sent to the drowning chamber instead, except this guy is stuck in here and I don't know how to get rid of him. Uh, I don't really want to break glass. But yeah, here we go. Some cows are being sent here. 
and they just collect up here and they just drown by normally by default oh the pigs I should add get separated uh, currently they toggle to go in the lava and burn up and die if not that piston will track that one goes up and they get sent through the water tubing over to the pork cookhouse where they drop through that lava and give me corked pork chop cooked pork chops I don't know I, there's a bit of a tongue twist to that word anyways we come down here and here's the foyer in full uh, operation so all the items land here I can just AFK here and pick up everything and it appears I'm full you know what I don't really need that sugar cane so and we'll do that and yeah next we'll check out the passive mob farm here and it just occurred to me I don't actually have a way of getting up here it's pretty much a freestanding structure except for the redstone line here which turns the farm on and off so we're gonna have to gonna have to pillar up pillar up here and first thing you may notice is right now the farm is off it's flooded with water so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here onto the roof this is the redstone that controls the entire farm it's pretty much like the lava lights we have water here pistons uh, let the water flow retracted but when they're extended they will uh, cut off the um, cut off the water and what I want to do here is I realized I didn't have an override switch last time I was up here when I had to do something so I'm gonna put that on and that should cut off the water because uh, otherwise I'd have to go downstairs and manually toggle the uh, manually toggle the switch can come down here bust in and this is the passive mob farm so this is my own design I came up with this uh, by myself uh, I sort of you know built off the back of ethos design but this one is 100% OC well 98% OC uh, but what we've got here is we've got five spawning pads and you saw earlier uh, it's they designed that water will perfectly cover them without leaking down into here um, and yeah there's enough grass there's quite a bit of grass here lots of light because when uh, water covers grass it can kill the grass uh, particularly at night time if it's dark so I need lots of light also to prevent hostile mob spawning and as you can see even standing in here at this back corner there's plenty of passive mobs spawning up the back there so when I'm downstairs this runs at full speed and yeah the passive mobs just simply walk off into the water Final to the middle, you can see some cows and sheep just spawned. Oh, and then a pig just popped in. And they will collect in that hole there, something just fell. And then they'll go through the sorting system that we saw earlier. I should probably add, this is the only grass in my base. As you can see, uh, I've removed all the grass around. This is why it's all dirt, because if I had grass out here, passive mobs could spawn over there. Uh, passive mobs could spawn down here, over there. And, and so on so that's why I had to remove all the grass unfortunately if mycelium was in the game I'd probably replace it with mycelium and create like a funky uh, mushroom forest, forest biome but unfortunately mycelium was added in 1.0 so no mycelium it has to be dirt or I'd have to slab it all over or flood it with water and I just prefer the dirt kind of gives it that uh, feel this that's why I call this bay uh, this base chocolate bay because sort of inspired by chocolate island it's not an island it's technically a peninsula and it's surrounded by water this is like a large bay here and so yeah I like the name chocolate bay gonna head back up on the roof I've turned on the mob launching tower and now you may be wondering what does mob launching tower mean and uh, as you can see right now the mobs are being sorted and they're being sent across here um, I get up here get oh that's right <laughs> I have a really dangerous way of getting up here there we go they get sent through this tubing here and they all collect up here <laughs> and uh, we'll let them collect for a little bit this piston by the way I can crush them and kill them if I want to get rid of them because this isn't about launching the mobs this is about launching me 
So, mobs have collision, and when you have lots of mobs pushed together in a single spot, and you're colliding with them, you know, multiple mobs at once, you get pushed even further. Well, what happens when you get collided with several dozen mobs? You can see they're still filtering through the uh, pipe there. Last time I did this, some skeletons got stuck there. I need to look into that. Um, but yeah, they seem to be going fine this time. I think we've approached mob cap. Yeah, about seven. Yeah, 70 entities in there. I think, yeah, I think, I think we've made mob cap. I think there's a few more down below, but... So they're all filing in. And this diagonal water stream pushes it, so they're in the corner here. And, uh, well, <laughs> three, two, one, blast off! <laughs> oh, man, that's so much fun. Some, usually I get shot further. There's a few times where I've landed almost on that shore over there. But, yeah, I don't know, it's just a fun little thing. So there's a few other little things to show around the uh, base here before we head off and look at the other parts of the world. This thing. This thing is my boat launcher and this has been quite the headache and something tells me this might actually kill me right now. If this kills me on camera this will be hilarious. So the design of this is I can launch a boat and go, you know, boating around the the lake here go somewhere else around and then I can return the boat because of course when you break a boat in beta it just drops sticks and planks there's no way to get the boat item back so if I hop in oh it works oh good and there we go I take off and zoom across the lake I should probably add by the way all these cobblestone pillars you see around the place those are dungeons I found I found quite a bit of dungeons I've done a lot of caving in this world. I've probably found over 150 dungeons <laughs> and I still not found a golden apple because the golden apple is the rarest uh, object in this game. And uh, yeah, so that's the boat launcher. Now, if I want to return the boat, what I do is I sort of aim for the middle here and then, oh, good, we survived. Get out of the boat. Step on the pressure plate, which drops the boat and returns the boat down here. And yeah, uh, the reason why I say this might kill me, twice I've had like the boat sort of glitch out and I take so much fall damage, I die immediately and all my armor breaks, which makes me think I'm taking like exponential amounts of damage. I've only ever done it twice. It's quite uh, interesting. By the way, this is just access to the redstone. I use a... Uh, I think this is a falling edge detector to get, send a quick pulse to the door to quickly release the boat, but not release the uh, next boat. The other thing, of course, is I now have a, I have a path over here. I have these little bridges. This is the natural terrain. I have not altered it. I thought about building like a altering it, but I thought, yeah, I'll keep it. Um, thought about like building a causeway or something. And yeah, this leads over to Mr. Skeletal. Uh, Mr. Skeletal was the first statue I built. Uh, this creeper came afterwards. And much like the creeper, which is made of mossy stone, which you cannot craft, you can only find in dungeons in this version, Mr. Skeletal is also a flex of my wealth. He is built out of nine stacks of iron blocks. <laughs> because I have so much iron that I just I can't I just don't use it. And so I thought I might as well use it to to make uh, something. Here is uh, Mr. Skeletal. Thank Mr. Skeletal. was built on the 26th of August of this year. Was it this year? Yes, this year. That's right. And we can actually go inside him. If we come up the back here, there's a ladder. Inside is filled with torches because I want to make him bright and stand out at night because, once again, making things look bright at night time... Uh, really gives a visual appeal. Inside his head, I've got a little bed up here if I need to sleep. And come up here. And this is the, the top of his head, and it's a viewing platform. Um, we can look out across the nearest patch of grass to the base. 
there's the base. We're too far away from the spawn to see it, unfortunately. And he's got a bow. He's holding a bow. It's a pixel art of a bow, which I based off of a statue from a, an old Minecraft world a long, long time ago. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Sometimes I come and leave offerings of uh, bones to him just so I ensure good luck. Usually before I go caving to uh, hopefully find a golden apple, but alas, Mr. Skeletal has not blessed me. Actually, we have to use the boat launcher one more time because there's one more thing around here I'd like to show before we start using the transit hub. And this was not something I built. This was a naturally generated structure. And it's over this way, so the base is this way, and we uh, go down this uh, this cove over here. Now, as we all know, Minecraft is a Christian video game. It was founded on Christian principles by a devout Catholic, Marcus Pearson, uh, aka Notch. And it is no wonder that uh, this world, of course, is blessed by the Messiah of Man, our Lord and Saviour. By containing his tomb. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm joking, by the way. But yeah, this is an interesting landform over here. I call this the tomb of Jesus Christ. And you're about to see why. Um, <laughs> do I have any blocks? Yeah, I do. Okay. So, if we come over here. And I'll just get out of the boats. And we'll pull her up here he has risen the lord has risen hallelujah so yeah this is a naturally generated structure so this is a gravel beach and what's happened from what from what i my educated guess as to what's happened here that's a cave down there it's a cave space and with gravel beaches you get these two block high cliffs like the beach is sunk down a block and so you have this natural sort of cross shape and because the cave is overriding the dirt but not the gravel um it, yeah it's created this weird thing that looks like as i said the tomb like this is the tomb of jesus christ like uh, you know when he's emerged and he's resurrected after being uh, crucified it's just i don't know i think it's really funny there's also a lava lake over there as you can see but the lord has risen Back home in the storage room here, and now it's time to go down these stairs. Got a little arboreum, ar arboreum, I don't know what you call that. So where do these stairs go, you might ask? Well, this leads to the transit hub. This is the way I get around mostly in my world. I do have a nether hub, which we may visit in a moment here, but... This is my main primary source of getting around. I have my cart tracks and I also have an Eats Road. I love these things so much. Um, but yeah, so these my cart tracks, I have 10 stations, only currently 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are in use. And they take me to various pl uh, places in my world. I have these uh, tunnels which I carved out with TNT uh, using controlled explosions. And yeah, it just allows me to go places. So let's go to the first location, the strip mines. This is where I get all my diamonds. So we head down here, down this spiraling track. And we come through here. That grass there, by the way, that's naturally generated, which is why I haven't, uh, why I left it alone. So yeah, this takes me to the branch mine. This was, I believe, one of the first things I built. Um, this tunnel is actually uh, in later, but the uh, the branch mine is very old, and I'll, I'll, I'll show why. So we're coming up to it, and I have spent quite a bit of uh, time here. I've got a lot of my resources here, and here we go. Yeah, num number of diamonds mined, 657 diamonds have been mined as of the 7th of June, 2023. So I need, uh, I think there's been more since then. Oops. There's been more since there. So originally, I had a minecart coming down here that goes up to the surface, just past the uh, edge of the dirt. It's uh, the grass area. But then when I uh, made the tunnel, I decided to hook up to the transit hub and come through here, ripped out the track. 
And I've left that just because it's a bit of history. Also, I can see the daylight up there if I want. So this is the old original starting area. I've got a bed I can sleep in. Which will sleep. It's now day. Spare minecarts in there. Some storage. I haven't really looked at this a long time. I think most of it's just cobblestone. Cobble, cobble. Oh, bit of gravel and flints. A bow. Yeah, not much in here. And I've got some furnaces, I think. Yeah, most of these are empty. Because this is the original area. This has all been exhausted. So this tunnel is a 3x3 three three tunnel. What I do is I mine 200 blocks in each direction in a straight line. And I mark with these signs how many diamonds I found. And let's write this. I have a minecart tunnel going along. And I've been continuously branch mining this way. Uh, if you may notice, this one is surrounded by torches because I found 22 diamond ore in this tunnel. We'll get to that redstone torches there in a second. Yeah, so this is the most I've found in a single tunnel. There's a lot of zeros. Sometimes there's like 10... Four, eight, zero, quite a few zeros there, five, but yeah, 22 is the record I found in a single 200 block tunnel. But we'll continue uh, riding along because we'll go to the new part of the branch mine. Uh, this is my favorite area, by the way. This is a cave system, and I kept all the lava for looks and made it all glass. I think it looks pretty neat. Um, the, the signs and the doors do cause fires. These fires do not burn the blocks, but they can hurt. They can hurt me, and they can burn other things that I can burn. So, yeah, this is the end. And then this is the new outpost. Uh, Strip Mine Outpost 2, which was built on the 18th of September 2020. And this is where I currently uh, do all my strip mining. So... Quite a few things in here. I think this is all cobblestone. Coal. All the coal I've mined. Plus some additional rail stuff. More cobble. All the redstone dust. Yeah, I have plenty of redstone. Dirt. Gravel. And that's it. And then some furnaces for smelting stuff. So this is the current tunnel I've uh, dug. I put a door in front to keep the mobs out, but also, like, if the door open, that means I've not finished in the tunnel. I shut the door when I'm done. And so I found 11 there, 5. I think this is the record holder for the new section, 15. Not quite uh, 20, like uh, the current, like the previous record. But, yeah, this is how far I've gotten. And yeah, so I haven't even put the doors and signs in here. And I can just mine this out even further and just continue digging. Continue digging, continue excavating, uh, searching for them diamonds. The next location we'll visit in the transit hub is the wolf farm. So this is my second passive mob farm in the world. And as the name implies, it spawns wolves. And here we are. If we pop out, um, this is the wolf farm. And it appears to be operating. So, uh, this is a mostly experimental farm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it doesn't quite exactly work. I think I need to rework this slightly. But the idea is, uh, this is a... Uh, I don't know what kind of biome this is, but I do know for a fact wolves spawn here. And the idea is I want to be able to farm wolves and collect and tame wolves. Uh, oh, there's a music disc in there. I'll take that. Um, yeah, and farm and collect wolves. And uh, yeah, so what I've done, if we stack up here, I can explain the principle behind it. It's a normal passive mob farm, except... I've put a layer of glass over everything, and that's because, uh, from what I understand, uh, 
sheep and cows need a two block space to spawn, but wolves and also pigs and chickens can spawn in a one block high space if there's a translucent block above. And so what I've done is I'm trying to force wolves and to spawn more frequently. Right now there's a whole bunch of chickens. This is just a very simple spawning pad. Nothing super advanced. Um, we're on the edge of a snowy biome as you can see over here. That by the way that's a double zombie spawner that uh, cobblestone pillar. And what I'm doing is I've got a separator here. So chook separator, standard chook separator sends the chickens into fire. And then the wolves and pigs drop down here. And I've got ladders on these blocks. And so the pigs, because uh, so wolves will fit through the gap of a ladder or a trapdoor, pigs do not. And so what the wolves, uh, what the pigs do is they go through here and they drop down to this EMP unit. And then meanwhile, the wolves will go down the other side. And an EMP unit, you might ask, what's that? That's Ethos Mob Processing Unit. This is a concept that Ethos came up with a long time ago, and he basically has never touched since. Why have I got these? Just for fun. But yeah, this is like a fully uh, configurable uh, thing. So the pigs currently fall through lava and die. I think... I can turn that off. Yeah, I can turn that off so they don't uh, burn up. They can give me cooked pork chops. So this is another pork chop farm. I can turn that back on. I can just send them straight to be incinerated as well as their drops doing that. And then if I want to let them out, I can do that. Same. Actually, no, I want to keep that on. Same with the wolves. Oh, look, we got a wolf. Hello. Oh, I don't have any bones to tame you. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Um, I need to label these. Yeah, so that's a water drop. I've got a water drop by default so they can survive. I can in incinerate that, um, them and then I can let them out. So, yeah, I could like open this up, tame all the wolves in there. And, um, and yeah, and then I can get myself my wolf army. The problems with this farm is it's very inefficient. Um, it does take a while for the mobs to fall off. And also, you may have saw that chicken swimming around. Uh, I've noticed... I, I thought mobs wouldn't fall off. But, yeah, occasionally mobs fall off. And after a while, there'll be tons of pigs and wolves in the water here. And they're not, you know, being processed, meaning the farm is slowing down. And it's just... Yeah, this needs a rework. In theory, the concept works. I've proven it works here. It's just it needs to be improved. Next location we're going to be visiting is the sand pit and we're going to go to the original sand pit. I'll explain uh, explain what I mean here. So I have two locations that I have been mining sand and sandstone from. The first one I have pretty much exhausted and the second one I'm currently working on. But we're going to visit the first one because the second one's much further out and really uh, there's nothing to see. It's just a small desert that's being excavated for sand and sandstone. I'm just going to show the original location and uh, yeah, because this is important because most of the, pretty much all the sandstone in my world came from that, uh, that particularly the base that I built came from here. Uh, this is an attempt, by the way, at a, uh, a junction. <laughs> I was attempting to create like a junction thing here um, because this goes to the old sand pit, that goes to the new sand pit and I wanted to like toggle between the two, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't work. <laughs> so we're just gonna we're just gonna ignore that, and we're gonna go up to the old sand pit. And here we are. And of course, it's the middle of the night, but thankfully I've got a bed. I can sleep. And ta-da! So yeah, <laughs> this was all uh, a beach. Once upon a time, and it's all gone. Uh, we're actually not that far from the base, by the way. You can see the edge of the dirt here. You know, there's some mobs burning. Um, oh, yeah, I think you can just make out over there. If you look up in the corner, you can just make out the top of the passive mob farm. We are close to the base, but... Um, yeah, this was all sand and sandstone, and I've mined it out and lit it up, and it's created this... Uh, 
Wastelands Biome, that was what uh, Exuma called it on uh, uh, Hermitcraft Season 2. There is still some sandstone over there, which I can pick any time I want. But to give you an idea just of how uh, devastating the environmental destruction is around here, uh, yeah, just look at that. Look at this. I've mined out this whole area around there. Um, then over here. And then I have this path. This was just an ease of access uh, slab path. There's some really cool mountains over that way, but we're not going to look at them because... Um, Beta Mountains are cool, but once you've seen one, they're kind of all the same. But, yeah, I might build something there one day. Uh, but, yeah, I've got plenty of sandstone over here. I, I can still uh, continue to pick clean. Uh, there's a huge uh, lump of clay here, which I have not excavated for various reasons. Um, mostly just to, to, to cheese off people <laughs> whenever I finally show this world, which, you, which you're watching right now. Uh, yeah, actually, you can see there's the edge of the bedroom, and that's the tower, that shitty tower I built. And come around here, there's even more. There's more clay there. In hindsight, there's quite a bit of clay. Um, a little interesting tidbit of history. This was originally going to be my strip mine down here, and I abandoned it, and I don't know why. I can't remember. But yeah, it goes all the way around to that waterfall and stops there. Um, there's, there's barely any sand over there, and I basically decided to stop. Still plenty of sandstone to pick, as I've said, but yeah... That's how much sand I've used. Most of that has gone into TNT, because I need lots and lots of TNT. I have done a bit of uh, sand, uh, no, sorry, not sand, uh, piston duping, using the uh, piston uh, block duping bug in beta 1.7.2. I downgraded my world to that version, we're in 0.3 here. Um, just for uh, testing purposes, I should say, not to, I don't give myself items, all the resources you've seen are legit. I was only using it for TNT because my justification was in modern vanilla Minecraft, you know, with the modern fl uh, slime block flying machines, they have, you know, the, the TNT dupers where they drop TNT. And I was basically experimenting to see if I create could create a beta equivalent of that where I had duped TNT blowing up stuff. And you'll see why I needed why I considered doing that, because I had something I had to blow up a lot of, but we'll get to that later in the video, but yeah, quite a bit of environmental devastation around here. Before we jet off to our next location, I should probably add, you've probably heard a musical tune as we've come through here, I'll, I'll demonstrate. And that is, um, that's actually a feature that I install. I've got a little tune as I come back into the train station because quite often I'll AFK, I'll tab out and do something while I'm riding the railway lines and there's no like indication of when I get back because there's no ambient minecart noises in beta 1.7 of course. And so I'd have that little tune play letting me know I'm back home and you know stop watching a YouTube video or stop reading something and get back to work. <laughs> Anyways, next place we're going to go. Underwater 360 TNT Cannon. This is a completely pointless project that I just built for the sake of building. And, uh, yeah, I bought some TNT to demonstrate what it is and how it works. This track, interestingly, uh, goes over the top of the other one. That's what that is. And also, interestingly, this goes over another piece of significant infrastructure. There's a torch missing there. Oh, I just noticed that. I, I rarely visit this thing. Um, <laughs> but there's a torch missing there. Why is that? Huh. Maybe it was Herobrine. But yeah, so this, this track uh, also had the unfortunate... unfortunate uh, uh, it was unfortunate to be in uh, uh, the position of blocking um, my Eats Road, my Eats Road to the test perimeter. So that's why it suddenly goes up there, goes up here like here. Uh, yeah, there's an Eats Road down there. But yeah, it ends here. This is the 360 TNT cannon. 
and this is the redstone access and if we go in here go up this ladder more redstone access and we come up here to the viewing area and good thing it's day because this will actually make it easier to see so what is the 360 TNT cannon simple it's a TNT cannon that shoots shoots TNT uh, or underwater cannon that shoots TNT underwater in all 360 degrees direction and you may be asking why oh better get back in there um, why because I can <laughs> so fire <laughs> uh, so utterly pointless I love it uh, better have some mushroom soup because I took a bit of damage there um, okay so the, the the story behind this is once again I, I'm copying Etho I know I'm sorry um, Etho built this a long time ago I built something like this a long time ago um, on, a, on like a this weird PvP server it's like a very old video there was like this server where they were like create TNT cannons to try and kill each other these players and uh, yeah, this was something he built. And I thought, why not build it? I want to have a go at uh, building such a thing. And so I sort of came up with it. I reverse engineered it out of like myself, like the concepts, and uh, created all this redstone, all these redstone torches, all these delays. There's a whole bunch of like repeated delays somewhere for all of this. I think it's this. Um, it's not perfect, but. It was just something to do because I have all this redstone and you know, I might as well use it for something. So uh, I should probably add, um, if we swim up here, uh, we're actually quite close. The, the sand pit, the old sand quarry is just over there. So we're just out here in the lake. Those are those uh, cool hills I was talking about. But yeah, that's the underwater 360 TNT cannon. Utterly pointless. The next location we'll be going to is the cave's house, uh, but before we do that, I just want to show this Eats Road. This thing is so cool. If you don't know what an Eats Road is, it's it's another Etho invention. invention. Etho's advanced transport system, and uh, the reason why I built it is because it's cool, and this is literally something you cannot do in modern Minecraft. This thing is impossible. You cannot build this. Uh, this is literally uh, beta and early release Minecraft only. But this is the system. Hop in the boat. Automatically takes off. Don't touch your keys. And we ride the boat. And the boat gets sent along. Uh, I believe it's 8 meters per second or 8 blocks per second, which is the same speed of a minecart at high, uh, high speed. So it's not like faster than a minecart, but as I said, it's way cooler. Uh, this this particular eats road is quite short. This is the stop. I'm stuck here until I get out. I get out, and then it sends the boat back in to be reused in this station. And this is a junction. So um, I currently got two eats roads. This goes to Chocolate Bay. That's the name of the base, railway transit hub, and Nether hub access. And this goes to the water perimeter. We're not going to go there because one, there's nothing there currently. Uh, I'm pretty much what I'm doing is I've been digging out a, per a classic perimeter, like basically lowering an area to sea level and flooding it with water. Uh, that's going to be my test area when I'm going to test mob farm designs and, and such in the future when I get it done. Uh, the other reason, it's two and a half thousand blocks away. Because I had to look for an appropriate location for it, and uh, yeah, pff, we're not riding it, but this this thing is so much fun. Um, this is a little behind-the-scenes access, and also there's a cave here, which I ended up lining up. Infinite water spring, and uh, yeah, so each of these stations, this is what they look like. This is the redstone. Uh, this is what causes the, the door to launch. We've got a quick pulser here, which lets out one boat. It's like the, the boat dock. It lets out one boat. And this redstone is what holds the boat in place when you come back. This is the redstone for the other thing. And you load the boats in using an easy loader, uh, which is this thing over here. Uh, can we... Oh, there's only one boat in there. Actually, you know what? This is a perfect time to show how this works. So, 
get some wood. We'll craft. We'll craft a few boats. There we go. And place them here. You you've got this water pattern. You place it right in the middle. Uh, give it a bit of space because if you place them too quick, they'll break. They might bump into each other. This is just all behind the scenes access. And then yeah, the boats stack up here in the water. They rise up. Uh, can we see this one go in? Yeah, we just caught it. And yeah, so they all stack up. And there's multiple boats in them. I don't have an easy loader for this station because I started building this before I realized, oh yeah, I should probably uh, space these out better <laughs> so I could have an easy loader. Yeah, in fact, this I had to move it forward one block to because it was conflicting with this one. It's It was a bit of a mess. So if you're going to build these things in your world, plan them out better. <laughs> don't be like me. Um, I could make this look nicer if I wanted to, but I don't. Um, oh, by the way, these ladders hold the boat down underwater. That's why the boat moves so fast, is because the flow of the water and also being submerged underwater combines to create speed of the boat. So there we go. That's the Eats Road. Uh, more behind the scenes access here. Easy loader here. And if you come down uh, here, you have this is the musical note tunes for the minecart stations and then the redstone for the uh, the thing. It, it's back there. It's pretty much the same as the other station. All right, on to the cave's house. So the cave's house... Oh, actually, I don't really look at this. Oh, there's some yeah, spare minecarts in here. Actually, this, this is how you get to the redstone down here. So the cave's house is a... Uh, caving outpost. So as I was caving in my world looking for golden dungeon dungeons to find a golden apple, I was having to travel further and further out and it was getting to a point, by the way, this is all glass um, because slimes are spawning down here and I'm trying to prevent slimes from spawning. There we go. So I was having to go further and further out to find dungeons, to find new caves, to find new dungeons and hopefully get a golden apple and so I end up just building an outpost however it's 2,000 blocks away so we're gonna just speed up the video until we get there And here we are, almost there. Ta-da! Welcome to the Caves House, completed on the 3rd of November, 2023. So this is a much more recent build. This has been a focus of my world in uh, in recent months. And uh, yeah, let's just take a step outside. So as I said, this is an outpost for caving, for finding dungeons, but also... I wanted to make this look good. I wanted to make a building that looked good with grass and leaves and, and just make a good looking house. And this was what I came up with. It's a weird looking house. It uses an interesting block palette choice. I mean, the brick the brick roof is a, a, is a real flex because bricks and clay are so hard to get in beta. But I like it. Um, so let's let's go over the uh, the interior first. So inside, this was the first part I actually built. This is like the main area. I've got my bed, storage. Oh, this is the second flex chest. This is stuff I've been collecting <laughs> from mining. So I've got even more diamonds, more iron and gold, just various crap. I used a bit of wool building this, so I collected a bit of wool. And this is just your general blocks. Decided I was going to decorate this with paintings. This is the main hall with the clay chandelier. Uh, I wanted a chandelier in the middle. I had no idea what I was going to make out of it. And I decided clay because clay is, is, a, is a big flex. Uh, got all paintings. A fireplace, which is also my furnaces. This is where I smelt all my things. 
And, okay, so... And then we've got this rug with jack-o'-lantern lining in the middle. I don't know what this pattern is supposed to be, but it's something. Yeah, it's something. It's something, something. So I come out here. Got a little well. Um, the, I, I was inspired by the, the little wells in uh, the Twilight Forest mods that I, I just built this little well. Just something decorative. Doesn't go anywhere. Got a little gravel path. Lots of flowers. Uh, got the uh, birch, the the tall tall tree, I think it's called. Uh, I put a sign on it. I, tall tree, 9th of November of this year. So yeah, it's just birch trees growing on top of each other. It's something. It's just uh, really, it was just a landmark because I was getting lost. I was getting lost, and yeah, just having this really really tall thing, tower above everything, really helps you figure out where you are. Little boat dock here, not automated, just a classic little shelter. In fact, the boat keeps getting pushed out by creatures, but we ignore that. Some hidden pot lights. These hedges also contain hidden lighting. I tried to light up a lot of this area because I was getting jumped by creepers quite a bit as soon as I come out of the house. So, um, tried my best, got some glowing trees. Tree farm with a floating spruce tree, apparently. Uh, growing, it's just like your standard tree farm, uh, growing spruce and birch trees, because once again, that tree farm back at my main base is primarily oak. I can't really grow these trees in it, so I just decided to um, grow them here instead. Got a forest of entirely big oak trees, kind of inspired a bit by Monsters uh world i think he had this i got some bushes man-made bushes got these hidden lights i know glass does not look really hidden but it's it's less it's not flush with the surface i do put some torches and trees i am thinking about expanding the forest i uh, got a greenhouse ethos greenhouse this is where i got all my flowers it's not the efficient most efficient way of getting flowers and seeds but um it's something basically you bone meal all this grass and you stand right in the middle here. Oh, actually, we've got some in here. Get your water bucket, place it there, and all the water streams break all the flowers and tall grass and push all the flowers and seeds to you right here in the middle. Uh, th I think this pretty much works in modern Minecraft, but now with items floating in water, it probably doesn't, so... But yeah, and then on the back side here, this is the other door. Have another gravel path with uh, hedges, big tree. Got an archway here. This uh, uh, this is growing on me. I don't know. I did, wasn't didn't feel so good about it at first, but it's growing on me. I should add these logs, by the way. Uh, leaves will despawn no matter what, even player leaves if there's no logs nearby. So I have to have wood to stop the leaves from despawning. This leads up to like a little gazebo area. Got like two seats with a, a piston table looking out across the lake. Kind of nice. And then the other end, this goes to my second mushroom farm. Since I spend so much time out here, I thought might as well do it. Mushroom farm version two. And this is the version 2. I took the principle of the first one, but I compacted it. Because what I'll realize is with having such a large growth pad, it was taking forever for the mushrooms to cover it. And so I thought more mushrooms would mean it'll grow faster. And it kind of does that. So what I've got is I've got these two wide pads with rows down each side. There's also a row here and a road over there. Um, place these blocks back and yeah and I've got red brown and yeah they just grow out and I come along and harvest it for mushrooms bowls if I need some bowls if I yeah need bowls and then I've got the mushroom drag race down here I was trying to think could I what to decorate the floor with and um, so what I've got this is a 15 block long uh, gap I put a brown and a red mushroom at the end, and currently the red mushroom is winning. It's grown three, four, while this one has grown none. 
Uh, I wanted to see, uh, you know, would they grow at equal rates or would one grow faster than the other? And clearly it's the latter. Um, actually, let's harvest this while we're here. So same thing, water comes along, flushes all the mushrooms off. Um, and yep, there we go, done. So I can turn that off and just come along and pick up all the mushrooms. See, so yeah, I really like this area. As I said, I try to focus a lot on aesthetic, but the other reason why it's here is because, yeah, I'm, lo I'm, I'm looking for dungeons. I, I go out caving. All these cobblestone pillars you see around are dungeons. Um, one of these is actually a weird double dungeon. I won't show it because trying to wrap this uh, tour up, but yeah, it's like a dungeon stack on top of another dungeon. Oh, that was a little test. That was like a dark room test uh, for flowers and seeds, and yeah, it didn't work out great. But I really like this area. I've had so much fun building it because uh, I've tried. To, most I've been mostly functional with the builds in my world, and to build something that's purely like aesthetic and out of blocks I normally wouldn't build out of, like sand and birch wood and and stuff like that. I, I really like this. Really like this indeed, and also not to mention this is a huge flex. <laughs> this whole build, like the clay and the bricks, such a huge flex. Oh yeah, I should probably quickly mention this. You may have noticed it in the time lapse, but this uh, rail tunnel actually passes through a dungeon. This is a spider dungeon that I happened to come across, and uh, yeah, and so I, did, I tried to preserve it as much as I could for the tunnel. Uh, no golden apple, unfortunately, but. Yeah, I just think it's pretty neat. And there's one last location we're going to visit on this tour. This place. But I'm not going to take the rail tunnel for this because I'm also going to show off the nether hub. I've mentioned it a few times already in this tour and it's finally time to see it. And I've got a flint and steel since I accidentally turned off the portal. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go have a look at it. And oh yeah, I should have mentioned this room is the redstone for the portal and also this is uh, redstone for the doors these piston doors access it also oh, this is another alternative roof access just in case you were wondering let's go light the portal and we'll go into the nether here we are uh, that ladder goes down into the nether proper. Oh, don't want to go down there, so I can go down there, mine glowstone and stuff. And this is the nether hub. So, this is the center of the world. These four portals, in the middle of the glowstone there, zero, zero. These four portals connect to the portals in the zero, zero pagoda. So, this is the, the central hub. And I'm going to have these four radial tunnels going in the four cardinal directions. And I have signs here explaining where things are. And there's not a lot going on here because I prefer to travel overworld. It's not that I'm against nether hubs. I just kind of prefer the overworld travel. Also, I don't want to travel too far in my nether because, once again, if I update my world to get things like nether fortresses and then much later nether quartz, the new nether biomes, 1.16 nether biomes, I'm going to have to travel very far. I'd rather not have to travel like tens of thousands of blocks to get those things so I'm trying to keep my footprint in the nether limited and if I need to build tunnels to those things in the future I can actually where does that go I don't know um, but yeah so I've got this tunnel design it's going to be two by three when I have access to silk touch I'm going to put ice in the middle so it can be a boat road also, it can be a sprint jump uh, thing, and also it can be horse accessible. So I'm future-proofing this nether hub design. Um, as you can tell by the bedrock, uh, we're up at the ceiling. Um, so, and I decided to decorate with bookshelves because I just haven't really built anything with bookshelves. I meant to put bookshelves in the uh, in the caves house, but uh, I didn't do that. So, just something, something, and then. Yes, we're going to go to the snow perimeter. I normally take the tunnel, uh, the uh, the minecart tunnel, but I just wanted to show you the nether tunnel. 
Uh, right now, this is all very rough. This will be, of course, changed later on when I get there. And now, you might be asking, snow perimeter. Why is it called the snow perimeter? Uh, this is the biggest project in this world. I have been working on this since late 2020, I want to say. And I'm still nowhere near the close to done. And it's night time. Okay. But don't worry, actually, this can be also an impromptu tutorial. Are you stuck out in the middle of nowhere at night with nothing but a bed? Just do this. Build up two blocks, create like a little safe platform, place down your bed and sleep. And there you go, ta-da, you can sleep safely, no nightmares, no mobs attacking you, you're all good. Just make sure there's no mobs near you, they're going to attack you. But the portal comes out here, and we're in a, a sort of a, the edge of a snowy biome here. Um, I haven't actually built a proper uh, portal location for this yet, where the um, where the actual build is. Um, I really only use that as like an emergency way to get out here if I've died and I want to get back as soon as possible to get my stuff. And also, I don't have a minecart and I can't be asked to make a minecart. But if we come over here, we've got some torches here, which mark the end of the railway line. Come down here, got a little mushroom cave. <laughs> I've got several mushroom caves around my uh, base, uh, but we just didn't have time to show it. So that goes all the way back to the tunnel at the main base. This is the end here. This is the temporary end, because this will continue through at some point. And then we've got this storage hall. Uh, in addition to my hoard over back home, I've also got this hoarding. And you notice I've got a lot of blocks, a lot of cobblestone, a lot of dirt, a lot of gravel, a bit of sandstone. And you might be wondering, where did I get this all? Like, what's the purpose? Like, why, why do I have all this? Well, one, I'm a hoarder. And two, I'm not saving every block of this. It's just the stuff I am saving if I want to use it for building what I'm going to build in here. Because this is the snow perimeter over here. Oh man, <laughs> this thing has taken so long and it's not even done. It is no, it's probably, I'd say, about 50% done. And it's just, oh, so much work. So, as you can see... I'm excavating the world. I'm digging everything down to bedrock. Uh, and I'm creating the ultimate uh, perimeter for the ultimate mob farm. So, as I said, I began this sometime in 2020. I've got I've got world backups. I make frequent world backups, so that's how I, I know. And, um, yeah, this is all I've managed to progress so far. Uh, so this is a 16 by 16 chunk perimeter. It's 320 by 320 blocks, so figure out. And it's chunk a grid lined. So that that floating blocks over there is the middle, and this is like the midpoint on the edge. So this 16 blocks that way is a chunk, 16 blocks that way is another chunk. And yeah, hello zombie. And this has been, yeah, a grind. Just a grind. I work on it when I feel like it. Um, and I've managed to flatten it all down to Y equals 60. All these holes. This is also doubled as my explosive testing area. I have tested uh, various TNT designs, like ways of placing TNT, piston duping TNT over here. For literal years, all my pretty much all my knowledge of how TNT works has come from this place. I've tried various methods to see which is the fastest way to mine. Like here, I let off a whole bunch of TNT, and and it created this like weird hollow. Um, I designed TNT uh, dupers that would push the TNT out in lines and then ignite it and drop it down and blow out a trench. That works, but it's quite a bit of setup, and also you got to make sure you've done it right, because otherwise the TNT will shoot up, 
and will blow up your machine and kill you and just undo all those hours of work. But here's the middle. Um, so these four blocks mark the corners of the chunks. So like this is one chunk going that way. This is another chunk going that way and so forth. And so, yeah, it goes, I believe, 10 chunks. Wait, hold on. Let me do my math. Because I, 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 am, I am a bit of a retard. I kept saying this was like 8 by 8 chunks for a long time. So 320 divided by 16. It's a 20 by 20 chunk. So it's 10 chunks in each direction. And, um, yeah. Uh, so I, I managed to flatten this all down. That was a grind. I spent weeks. Like, I would go to work, do things, and then come back and then spend like two or three hours just blasting off a few layers and um, right now my current mission because I dug that trench mostly by hand over there that big trench but my current mission is I'm slowly blowing out a trench on this side I'm slowly working my way back um, if we go yes yeah, see here so I've dug all the way down there I've got a little bit more to go uh, what I do, uh, the, the solution I came up with is, um, how do I show this? Dig down a block like this, three blocks like this, and create a two block long tunnel, like so. Go all the way, and every five blocks place a TNT. So, like that, four, and five, like that. And... I'll actually you know, I'll ignite it because it doesn't matter. Any any removal blocks in this area is helping me out. And it blows up. And it blows up this pretty neat four deep by three wide uh, section. It's, it's about the most efficient use of TNT, like manually placed, manually crafted TNT I've come up with. I, I've tried all these other ideas, but the thing is, like, they're very space inefficient. So, I mean, as you saw with this, like, I had, what was it, a six block long tunnel. So I only mined 12 blocks to remove. Uh, 12. Yeah, 12 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, and let's, let's do calculate again. 12 times 8. So 96 blocks. So, in reality, I am only, for every 12 blocks I mine, I'm removing 84 blocks. So, as far as I'm aware, that's pretty efficient. And so, when I feel in the mood and I have TNT on hand, I just come along and just do, like, two strips of this at a time. And, yeah, slowly working my way back. And what a grind. Plenty of snow here. I should come along and collect all this snow at some point. Um, the other grind is, of course, this. Because um, this is a snow biome, I have ice here. And so where the perimeter edge encounters a, a body of water, I've formed an ice wall cast. Remember, no silk touch, no enchantments. So what I've had to do is I've had to freeze the water and then, like, Create the like I'd freeze the bottom layer, then do the next layer, then do the next layer. In fact, you can still see part of the sand um, casting behind there. I got to remove that. Actually, I need to re reclaim that sand because that would be very handy for TNT making. But yeah, this and also I had to remove the water here. Once again, no flying machines, no sponges. The the method I came up with actually was. Um, blowing up letting the water freeze into ice and then blowing it up because when water gets blown up uh by tnt it doesn't um it doesn't create water in this version for some reason i don't know why but yeah this has been the big grind project one day i'll get it done and one day i'm going to create a really fast hostile mob farm which actually might be too fast because i've spoke about it with um, Deadly Dirtblock, who's also someone who's in the uh, beta technical s uh, stuff, and uh, he said <laughs> he said to me that this, this, this farm might be so fast it might actually crash my game. I don't care. I, I, I just want to be... I, I just want to, you know, dig a perimeter by hand 
in an era long before World Eaters, before Beacons, before Enchantments. Just be the guy who was just so, you know, autistic that he dug a massive hole in Minecraft for literally no reason. <laughs> It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just like a personal achievement to me. Let's, let's drop down, because the one thing I do love about this area, I do quite like a bit, is this cliff face. Because this, this was the wall of the trench when I was uh, doing um, the TNT duping experiments. And it creates, it's created like this really like cool effect. I really like this. So much obsidian I've got to clear up. Like, dear lord. Also, there's three dungeons in this area. There's a monster spawner around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. There's one over there. There's one there that I shielded with water. And there's a third one somewhere in there. There might be more, but I haven't found them. That's another reason to do control explosions. This was the original area I dug by hand. I did a torch grid. It spawned slimes like crazy. Oh, and there's two more things in this area that I want to show off before we uh, wrap up this tour. Um, first things first, perfect wither trapping room right here. I mean, you'd probably have to remove some of this bedrock, but yeah, you could trap a wither very easily in here um, and kill it or make it your personal block-breaking slave. And the other thing over here is I've done everything I can to preserve this, but I've got some glitched water. So yeah, this is water that's flowing over the top of, of lava, and it's only turned this bit into obsidian, but not this bit. So... I'm going to try and preserve this as the best I can. Eventually the idea is I'm going to flood this all with uh, water and turn it into ice and then use the ice to transport um, items, the create item streams, because once again, oh, great, no, um, once again, no, uh, no silk touch. I can't, I can't place ice, I can only cast it or move it with pistons. Ah, oh, this view never gets old. Oh, oh, oh. Some slimes are in the way. Never gets old. And that concludes the world tour. It's pretty long. There's lots to see. I haven't even shown everything. Like, I didn't show some of the outer areas that don't have rail access. I didn't show, like, my monuments when I went on walkabout. Like, there's a... There's like a tower I built 30,000, 30,000 over that way. There's one over 50,000. There's all these places I, I have not shown. I might show in a future video if, uh, if the three people who see this are interested. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I, I've been promising a few people I'd, I'd do this for a while. And now they're finally getting the video. I've got to finally stop being lazy. So I hope you enjoyed. Remember, if you dislike the video, leave a thumbs down. Uh, if you hate me, tell me in the comments section. And I, I look forward to uh, seeing you uh, next time. Bye.